Yes, I will be talking about monoclonal B cell lymphocytosis, MBL, as part of uh, a session on uh, preleukemic condition, which is uh, becoming a hot topic uh, also in blood cancers because, uh, because of the idea that uh, the best cancer is the one that never occurs or the one that you can find early so that you can uh, uh, cure and uh, eliminate before it becomes really an aggressive disorder. So that's the issue with the monoclonal B-cell lymphocytosis, is the, that is a preleukemic phase to chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It can be detected in uh, more than 10% of uh, individuals, healthy individuals, uh, with more than 40 years of age. And uh, uh, they do not all uh, progress and transform into CLL. Um, the only 1% of uh, um, individuals with MBL will develop every year um, uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia that, is, uh, uh, that needs to be treated. So it's still a rare occasion of progression, but still exists, and that's the reason why we have to follow up these individuals, and we have to follow up a large uh, portion of these uh, individuals, though even, even though only a small proportion will eventually need uh, a, a medical intervention. So the future of the research, the present and the future of the research is indeed to identify molecular features that allow us to discriminate those patients who will eventually progress into a life-threatening disease so that we can uh, start a treatment uh, earlier at the first detection. While instead the vast majority who do not need uh, follow-up and treatment, they could be left uh, alone and uh, they should not come anymore to uh, the hospital. First thing is that MBL is not a disease, uh, it's a, a preleukemic condition, but again, which leads to a disease that is chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is per se also an indolent disease that doesn't need treatment uh, at diagnosis. And again, uh, the same issues that uh, exist between MBL, so a preleukemic condition, and CLL, a disease, the same exist within CLL because many patients with CLL will not uh, ever need uh, a treatment even though they received a diagnosis of CLL. So the same challenge that we have in MBL, we have it also in CLL where it would be very convenient for the patient and for the doctors to identify those patients who will eventually need the treatment uh, and maybe succumb of the disease. While instead all the other patients should be just reassured that despite having a leukemic condition, they will never suffer out of it. Yeah, the lysocells is, has been the first uh, CAR-T therapy that has been approved in CLL, uh, which is funny in a certain way because uh, the first paper ever published in CAR-T cells in blood malignancies has been on CLL probably more than 10 years ago, but still it was probably one of the few diseases where there, were, there was no approved CAR-T. And indeed it, it is true that CLL remains a difficult disease to be treated with immunotherapy. Uh, lysocells is an exception, though the the rate of uh, the efficacy is still low compared to all other lymphomas or myeloma, where it is much more effective. And in general, immunotherapy like uh, uh, anti-PD-1, anti-PD-L1 do not work uh, in CLL. So we remain with a major challenge and a med clinical need to understand really how the CLL cells are affecting the immune system in a way that prevents uh, a real effective uh, uh, immune response.